Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Everton Tactical Show, brought to you by myself, Alfie Biggs, and the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. Today I will be discussing the Crystal Palace draw, how we lined up, the offensive and defensive shape, the return of DCL, Alex Wobey's brilliance, poor fullbacks, and did Sean Dyche make a crucial mistake? After this, I will take a brief look into our upcoming fixture against Newcastle on Thursday night, and what we can expect from their recent massive win against Spurs. The two sides lined up in almost a 4-2-3-1 for Everton and a 4-3-3 for Palace, with Decore playing as a lone six. As you see here, our offensive shape consisted of DCL as a lone nine, with a Wobie playing off him as a ten, and a flat four of McNeil, Gay, Garner and Gray behind. However, most of the time, our shape looked like this, with McNeil and Gray playing inside fluidly to create. This really works in theory if the whole team applies this system and the width is held by offensive fullbacks. However, we didn't have this and thus we were far too easy to defend against. As you can see on this second graphic, our attack lacked width and this has occurred throughout the season and especially on the Daesh. I do believe that this is due to the options available to us and not just Daesh preferred game plan. As in the past, he has really enjoyed using attack and fullbacks. I will go into more detail later on about our fullbacks, but I do truly believe we have the worst playing in the league. Tarkovsky after the game said, "We defended well. We haven't conceded a few. We haven't conceded a lot of goals recently, so that's a plus. But we do really need to expect more from our forward players. This is particularly damning." Now looking to how we defended, we set up in a four-four-two with a Wobie alongside DCL with a flat four behind the ball side winger. In this instance, Gray pushed up to press, whereas the opposition winger, opposite sided winger McNeil, tucked in deeper and slightly narrower to sort of aid in Gay with that space in midfield, especially if the switch comes over, we could be open for transition. James Garner had to be pulled wider and deeper than we would like to due to Schlupp's positioning, which was far from ideal, as this leads to the midfield being very open and Gay not only having to mark Eze, but marshal a whole lot of open space, which was sort of an issue we saw, especially in the Fulham game with Reed in their first goal. Another key aspect of our defence was Mikalenko versus Elise, and that, that almost always looked like there would only be one winner. I wouldn't particularly hold this against the Ukrainian, as Elise is a fantastic 1v1 player. And Mikhalenko, he's always done well in these sort of big one-on-one -on -one battles, especially sort of against Salah in the past against Liverpool. He's always put out a really good performance. The return of DCL was inspiring and really helped the way we played. A focus on knockdowns to either Iwobi or McNeil with his chest, which he's always been really, really good at, really worked nicely. And it's ultimately just really good to have someone to adequately occupy the centre-halves, even if it was a tough, tough, really tough battle against Alisson Gaye. He almost scored a brilliant goal, and that turn he often does is really utilised well, and that's a fantastic little asset to his game. However, again, on the whole, our attack was pretty poor, and we failed to create many goal-scoring opportunities. We only created an XG of 0.39, and we now have the worst attack in the top six tiers of English football when looking at just goals scored, which is obviously really poor. Our top goal scorers, Neil and Gray, only have four each, which really just isn't good enough. I believe that our attack is really stifled as well by having the worst set of fullbacks in the league. For example, Mikalenko is the 106th in the league for key passing and is far away our highest fullback in that metric. A group of him, Godfrey, Coleman, and Patterson is awful. And as you see here, this happened quite a few, quite a lot of times. I've seen this on Twitter as well. This screenshot. Just look how narrow our attack is. It's with McNeil coming inside, that space is there for a fullback. Joel Ward has got no issues there. Their back four has no issues. They can sit compact, they can sit tight. We're just, it's far too easy to defend against. It's a dream. On a more positive note, a performance I'd really like to focus on is Alex Wobies. I do truly believe this is his best position in this system. As his ability to play off DCL, drifting both wide areas, creating an overload, is really nice. A few stats from the game, which I thought were really interesting. He was the only player apart from Mason Holgate to create any XGA, so expect his goals through assists, uh, which would, even if it was only 0.2, Holgate got 0.1, that was it across the whole squad. Not good enough, obviously. He created most shot, most shot creating actions on the pitch with five, most key passes on the pitch with four, most passes into the penalty area on the pitch with three, most progressive passes on the pitch with six, and he had the most touches in the final third for Everton with 27. A final word on this game is around the Holgate sending off. I honestly cannot contemplate any reasoning whatsoever to keep Holgate on the pitch for as long as he was. I have had him on ropes since minute one, First half yellow, multiple fouls committed. And on the 72nd minute, he did commit another foul on Ayu. And he was clear that the referee had given him his last warning, yet he still remained on the pitch. This is really frustrating to see, as there was an obvious change of passes on the bench. 
And it's even without the sort of worry of a red card, we managed to stay in the game. Holgate, A, wasn't looking like he'd attack at all. B, it wasn't like he was excelling defensively. And we were like, OK, well, we need to keep him on to make sure we don't concede. He wasn't. He wasn't. He was getting rinsed every time by IU. And especially with all those, it was very tricky to defend down that right side with Schlupp, Mitchell and I all occupying, occupying different areas and rotations. But Holgate wasn't doing that proficiently. So why not bring on this right back who we who we know has an attacking skill set? It's it's obviously a stubbornness by Dyche. He doesn't like to change things game. He never really has. But it is just really frustrating to see. Um now looking on to the Thursday night game against Newcastle, I'd like to discuss and look at their game against Spurs. So, firstly, Joel Linton's and Murphy's ability to press in wide areas was a massive factor for why Spurs collapsed so early on. They really couldn't play out at all and were suffocated very high up the pitch. Willett was also excellent in this press, and he's their pressing has been fantastic since the start of the season. Eddie Howe's really worked on that, and he's done the players have really got up behind it. Furthermore, the willingness to step up from the deep by their centre half sort of press up into midfield if the ball does get past that first phase was really, really, really excellent. And especially specifically Shah, he was it was so impressive to watch how he stepped up and won the ball. And then once he won the ball, it would continue. Their constant rotations when attacking will also be something we will always struggle with. Isaac dropping in and often with any of the midfielders then replacing him as a focal point was successful. And then Willock and Jill Linton's fluency. The last sort of month, that's been so impressive to see, and it's really dangerous. Them constantly rotating, but also something that I will, I am very worried about is Joe Linton when playing off the left, the deep run. So he'll sort of start almost like in a wing back role, and then he'll get the ball, especially with Bruno G's um, ability on the ball. Joe Linton will peel off and then make that run in behind the, the opposition right um, right side of fullback, and Bruno can just pick him out easily. And that's really dangerous. And whoever does end up playing right back on Thursday night will have to be really switched on to that so maybe with Godfrey sort of his pace or maybe it could be Holgate again I'm not so sure on Patterson just physically as well if he's up against Joel Linton who's a big boy Willock's a very he's an athlete Willock he's very very fast could be again maybe Godfrey coming in I think Godfrey would probably be my go-to um, Iwobi will also have a massive role in man-marking Bruno similar to how he done to Corey but obviously Bruno is just level above he is excellent and if we give him any sort of time on the ball he will be able to pick out opposite we will be able to pick out these Newcastle players and that could be a real issue um I think it'll be a really hard game on Thursday but good still under the lights can lead to anything so we will have to see um thank you very much for watching you can find more of me on Twitter Alfie Biggs 03 make sure you subscribe if you haven't and drop a like thank you very much enjoy